All right, thank you. Questions, anything like that. So basically um, what today's goal is, is to give you guys a little background and talk a little bit about working by referral and really introduce you to the Brian Buffini Pathway to Mastery program. So we are going to be starting Pathway to Mastery. Um, the anticipation is two weeks um, with the low turnout today. I may push it back another week. So we may look at three weeks um, and I'll let you guys know later today. But <clears throat> basically, you know, what I want to do is I always like to start off um, these sessions with asking you guys a couple questions. So, and Donna, this includes you. So, you know, the two questions I'm going to have for you guys right off the bat is what percentage of your business is coming from referral? Number two is, are you using a CRM? So Donna, we'll go with you first. <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> so what percentage of your business is coming through personal referrals? Um, maybe 10%, that's it. Okay. And are you using a CRM? I am using a CRM. Okay, good. Erica. I would say 50% referral. Okay. And then I do use a CRM, but not on a sure use it. It's not my habit to use it all the time. Okay. And I need to change that. No worries. Good to follow you here. I just started, but you know, I had a two. So both of them are 100%. Okay. <laughs> well, we need more deals. We can't go off a two. You're giving me bad data here to work off of. You know, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. So basically, in this industry, 80% of your business should be coming through personal referral. Because when we look at all different markets throughout the years, the one piece of business that always remains consistent is personal referral. So we look back, we've gone through the short sale phase, you know, people killed it on the short sale phase. Look at a lot of those agents who were successful during short sales. They're not around anymore. You know, you go through expired, you go through for sale by owners. Right now we're in the internet lead phase, you know, we can't rely just on internet leads because that business will change, whether it's today, tomorrow, two years from now. But we're not in this business to be successful for two or three years. We're in this business to be successful till we retire. So when we look at that, we have to understand that the biggest reason that we're not as successful and not as high on our goals for referrals is because we're spending too much time doing the other stuff. <clears throat> Here's the deal. At the end of the day, you will get more business if you work daily, consistently on referrals. So one thing I want to do here is And Donnie, you can't see, but we have a up and down graph here. And what this is, this is an agent's income. It's up and down like a roller coaster. And here's why, and I'm sure you can all relate to this. So when we talk about this, we have right here, the agent's down at the bottom. What do we do? We go out and hunt, right? We go out and hunt for the business. Well, now we get two or three deals going on. Now what do we do? All we're worried about is closing those two or three transactions. That's all we're worried about. So what happens? We're not networking every day. We're not out there doing, you know, cold calling. We're not out there. Do we're just worried about getting this business closed now because I need the patient. Well, now what happens? Vicious circle. We're back at the bottom. So what do I do now? I go out and hunt. Now I go out and hunt again. Now I'm looking to eat again. Now I get some business going and I'm back at the top. And now I'm all I'm focused on is closing those deals. That's why the average agent closes six to eight deals because they're only managing and then they go through a lull. <clears throat> when we talk about, you know, you hear the stigma of, you know, springtime market, spring market, right? That's bogus. When's the best time to sell a house? Right now. Inventory's low, but we have to get out and talk to the consumer. That's the biggest problem is, you know, right now we're dealing with this. What's everybody seeing on the news every night? The coronavirus, right? Everybody remember the swine flu? Yeah. Same thing. Same, thing. Same concept. Yeah. We're canceling events. We're canceling everything. It's the flu. It's bad, sure. But people die from the flu every year. More people die from the flu. Yet we're creating this outrage. Why? The media. 
So if you're letting the consumer just rely on the media, you're not doing the job. What is the biggest question that you get every single day from people who know what you do? And they'll ask you every time they see you, and it's a simple question. What is it? Bingo, right there. How's the market? How's business? How's the market? Do you guys get that question every single day? Donna? Yes. Every day we ask that we get asked that question. Why? People care about our business. People want to know about the real estate market. Why? Everybody wants their real estate. So they, they, they own real estate. They That's right. Know their value. 80% of people retire off of their real yeah. estate. 80% retire off their real estate. But here's the deal. Real estate so much more. So much more. Why? Well, let's look back to our recession. 2007, let's call it 2010 time frame, ballpark. Every night when you came home and put on the news, every single night during the downtime, what was the leading story pretty much every night? Real estate and mortgage are killing our economy, right? Was it just us? Hell no. No way. But did we take the blame? Did our business take the blame? Absolutely. People believed that it was the real estate and mortgage industry that was causing this whole chaos. So now what? Okay. Well, now these people come home, they're brainwashed. Back in 2009, I wanted to go to Channel 5 and I wanted to take that newscast and I wanted to knock them out. Stop giving us bad news. Now, I want to go give that guy a big hug and a kiss. And I want to thank him for making my business more relevant than it's ever been. That is why prior to the recession, you never got asked as much as you do today. How's business? How's the market? You're the internet introduced. Now it's out there to the consumer. Now they can go search Zillow, Redfin, your website, find listings, it's more open. People are interested in this business. Their lives, they believe that their lives revolve around your business. So it's not just if I own a home, it's not just because you know what? Even the guy who's a lifelong renter, he's never gonna buy a house, he's always gonna rent. He's still concerned about the real estate market. Why? His life. Maybe his job's in jeopardy. There's nobody safe there in a bad recession. What does everybody do when they hear that word? Fire, layoffs. What's the first to go? School systems, teachers. Look what happened in the last one with retail. We didn't close stores, we closed malls. Retail, travel, airline, all these, there's every industry. I think the only industry that is probably safe, the only job that's probably safe during a recession, an IRS agent. Probably the only guy that's safe. Other than that, we're all worried. So people want to talk to you on a consistent basis. Here's the problem. We don't do it. We don't do it consistently enough. What do we do? We send Red Sox magnets with the schedule and Patriots magnets with the schedule and Bruins magnets and all these magnets. And then we send a holiday card. That's it. No follow up. No reaching out and touching someone. Do you know how many houses I've been in that have our agents' magnets on the fridge? And I go up and I say, Ah, oh, you know Erica? They say, Who? And I say, Erica, her magnet's on your fridge. Oh, I got it in the mail. Oh, you know what? I think she sold my brother's house years ago. And yeah, I don't know who you are. It's just on the fridge. They're not calling you with referrals. We need to be in touch with them. We all learn two things at a very young age, two basic concepts. Number one, out of sight, out of mind, right? We hear it, basic since we were little kids. Here's the other one. If you don't ask, you don't receive. Okay, so let's ask another question. How many of you ask for business on a consistent basis when you talk to people? How many of you are asking for the business every time you talk to someone, Erica? 
less than half the time. Less than half the time. I do all the time. All the time. Perfect. Kevin. That's my job now. So. All right, good. 100% of the time. All right, good. <laughs> good. Probably about 85% of the time. Donna. I started actually taking cards and putting them in my coat pocket. So anytime, even if I go to CVS or whatever, I drop my card to them and say, if you know anybody that is looking to buy or sell, I'll be more than happy to talk with them. Or if you have any reality questions, just ask and I'll be more than happy to answer you. How about friends and family? Donna, how about your friends and family? So you're well, doing it at CVS. How about your friends and family, the people that you see every day? Um, my sister has that. <laughs> I get it. So, you know, that's the thing. It's, it's consistency in that relationship. That's where we all feel. So what we need to do is we need a system. We need something that we can follow that's easy to manage. That's going to get us out there doing this. One of the Simplest things that I've gotten out of Buffini is a simple acronym. The acronym is HAS. Stands for habit, attitude, skill. Habit, attitude, skill. The first thing that we all have to do is we need to create daily habits for this stuff. If we create a simple daily habit that we adhere to, we will be more successful. That's the problem. Because this is a job where you are running your own company. I admit it, Century 21, Northeast, and any other company out there, we're all business in a box. We're tools, we're systems, we're training, we're support, we're, you know, all that fun stuff. But at the end of the day, you're the one that physically has to open the box and do the work. We're going to give you all the artillery. Our tagline is we offer more. There's so much out there that we are not taking advantage of and we need to. We need to open that box and use it. The problem is, is we're independent contractors. So if I wake up on a summer day and it's 90 degrees and it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, guess what I'm doing? on the beach. Oh, I'll make calls tomorrow. I have no appointments today. So if I have no appointments, it's a day off. It's kind of a mindset. Let's face it. Let's call a spade a spade. It happens. We've all had those days. Let's not lie. We need to fix that. We need to create a habit. You have a job. If your job was to call and you had a job, someone's paying you for it, and they said, here's part of your job. You got to call five people a day. And you didn't call those five people. What would that job do? They'd write you up. And then if you didn't do it again, guess what they do? They'd fire you. Right? Yep. You writing yourself up? You guys firing yourselves? Heck no. So what we need to do is we have to create some structure. We gotta give you organization. Just like that's one of the biggest things we've been focused on is trying to build our systems and our routines and things like that. We need to do the same for you. So in real estate, there's four basic methods of communication that we're going to talk about today. And this is kind of where we start with Buffini. Now there's a lot to Buffini. We're just going to, we're basically not even, we're not even scratching the surface here. We're just giving you a little teaser. But there's four basic methods of communication because the biggest thing is to consistently be in front of these people. I took a marketing class one time. Biggest thing I got out of it. Simple. Nobody reacts without six touches. Take six, a minimum of six consistent touches to make someone remember you. Are we doing that with our magnets? Nope. Are we doing that with our mailings that we do to 5,000 people with a label on it? Nope. Simple saying, less is more. We try to do everything in bulk. If we took more time and put care into a smaller amount and did more effort, you'd get more business. So let's stop trying to think about going thousands of letters. Where do we start? We're gonna talk about CRMs in a few minutes. 
But what I want to do is I want to make a list of everybody I know. Names, addresses, cell phone, email, basic stuff. That's where I start. And then I build it from there. Becomes a biography. We'll get into that in a second. Start with your Christmas card list. Start with your Christmas card list. Good idea. So let's talk about the four basic methods of communication to these people. Number one, simply pick up the phone and call them. Call them. What I want you to do is I want you to take your lists. I don't care. I want you to have as many people as you know on there. We want to put them all in your database. But what I want you doing is I want you focusing on your top 100. Start with that. Now 100 may grow to 200 because you can handle it. You build a team. You build support. You build structure. Start with 100. That's our A clients. We'll get more into that in the Buffini course, ranking our clients. But those are your best people. The A clients simply are the ones that you know are going to send you business at some point if I work. I know if I work this person, I'm going to get deals out of them. So we start with the phone call. Well, we say, why do we want to, what are they going to, what are we going to talk about? 80% of these phone calls, they're going to bring up real estate, not you. Because of your marketing and branding now, because of the consistency we're going to create, they know you're an agent. So 80% of the time, they're going to simply ask you, how's business? How's the market? They really want to know. They're not just being nice. They really want to know. So what we do is we start picking up the phone and calling them. But one of the things that I'm going to give you guys at the end, I'm going to show you guys on our training site where you can find um, some of these documents. But one of the documents you're going to find on our training site there's going to be a list of different traits to listen for. It's going to be what? Favorite author. What's their religion? I'm not going to come out and ask these things. I'm listening for them. I'm not going to play 40 questions. I'm going to listen. What type of car do they drive? Do they have kids? What's the kids' names? What's the pet's name? Do they have a dog, cat? Do they have a bird? That matters. It's important to them. If it's important to them, it's important to you. You're not a dog person. You don't have to be. Fake it. It's communication. It's building relationships. What's their favorite TV show? If you call one of your friends, conversation flows, right? So I have two friends. I got Mark and Roger. Mark hates sports. Roger loves sports. I know when I call Mark, I'm not bringing up Tom Brady situation right now. I'm not going to ask him where do you think Brady's going to go. I'm lucky he knows who Tom Brady is. But if I call Roger, it's the first 10 minutes of our conversation. Your friends like that. Your family's like that. You have different things. You share common interest in a TV show. Oh, man, you see Lauren Oil last night? Oh, that was crazy. Power. Power. Movies. Whatever. It's relationships, it's sports, it's conversations. Think about your conversations when you call one friend and you call another friend. Totally different conversations. Erica, you have kids. I don't have kids, so I know. I've seen, I've been around the moms. And I, you know, but when you call another mom, isn't the conversation different than when you call one of your friends who doesn't have kids? Totally different conversation, right? It's totally different. Asking. The kids' names, the pets' names. That is so important. Think about your responses. I'm sure you guys all know, you see us online, my wife and I have a dog. We don't have kids, we have a dog. When people call, you'll get two ways of asking that question, they'll ask. They'll ask, how's the dog? And then they'll ask, how's Bella? I can tell you, and it's not because, it's just instinct, it just happens. When someone says, how's the dog? Oh, she's good. She's great. Oh, yeah, she's awesome. Blah, blah, blah. Quick answer. When someone says, how's Bella? Oh, Bella had back surgery, so on and so forth. When they ask about my niece and nephew, if they say, how's the kids? Or how's Mikey and Juliana? Oh, the kids are great. They're hysterical, blah, blah, blah. How's Mikey and Juliana? Oh, Mikey's playing hockey now. Juliana's in gymnastics. Your answers are different. 
It's the same question, just changing the content. Just changing that simple little thing, making it more personal. Watch making it more personal. You open up Pandora's box. It's technique. It's approach. It's how you talk to them. That matters. Problem is, a lot of us get on these phone calls and we're so nervous. These are your friends. These are your family. Part of my language here, I'm going to say a bad word. Shoot the shit. That's what I call these. Shooting the shit call. It's true. We all do it. We have to pick up the phone and call. We have to listen. That's where database comes into play. We listen for this stuff and we track it. This is why a CRM is so important because it becomes, everyone becomes a personnel file on every one of these people. That's what a CRM is. This is a personnel file on Rob D'Amico right here. So right here, these little tags, all I do is type them in here. Those are now searchable keywords. So now I have a little biography on Rob. He likes the Bruins. He likes to golf, loves Chinese food, Texas Roadhouse. You have all these little traits, these little things we listen for, ways to reward them, things to talk about. It's all of that. We listen. If we make these phone calls and they don't bring up real estate, neither do we. We don't have to talk about real estate. We only need to do one thing. Hey, listen, Kevin, I got to run, but listen, do me a favor. Don't forget anybody, you know, looking to buy something, love to work with them. Watch how many deals you get in a year. If you just ask. Now that statement, you're, I'm going to show you guys the website at the end where you can find all this basic content. But one of the things is asking for referrals. It's that consistency. One of the things I'm big on is you're going to talk, you're going to hear different trainers throughout your career. You're going to watch them on YouTube. You're going to go to seminars. You're going to do all this. And everybody's different. You're going to have guys that say you should read right off the script. Read the script. That's why it was built. I feel a little different. I think you take that script. You take the concept of it, but make it you. Unless you really suck. Then, then read the script. <laughs> but make it you. You guys hear my accent. I have to say stuff three times sometimes. I have a thick, heavy Boston accent. So if I came out and said some of these scripts, I would sound like a tool bag, big time. They'd be like, who is this guy? If I talked to my friends and I read off scripts, they'd be like, what are you talking about? You sound so bad. They wouldn't give me business. They'd be like, you're a robot. You're a robot. I want a robot to sell my house. I'm probably Redfin. So how do we avoid that? Make it yourself. Take that statement. Hey, listen, don't forget, if you know someone looking to buy a cell, I'd love to work with them, Kevin. Sounds organic, doesn't it? Does that sound scripted? One of the things you should do, take the dialogue you want to use, practice in front of a mirror. Say it a hundred times. Say it 10 times in the morning. Feel comfortable with it. You have to feel comfortable with it. Once you get through that exercise, like when I started saying this statement, hey, listen, don't forget, if you know someone looking to buy or sell, love to work with them. It didn't sound like that. It wasn't flowing like that. That you have to get comfortable saying it. You have to sound confident saying it. It's your delivery. Phone calls are so important. So we have 100 people. I should be talking to these people every two months. That's six phone calls a year to every, to my top 100. So people stop there and they say, oh my God, a hundred calls every two months. That's nothing. So let's break it down because what we want to do is we want to make this a daily habit. And here's why. <clears throat> my top 100. Realistically, are you going to sit there for a day or two and just make a hundred calls every two months? I hope not because that's a waste of two days. Spread it out, make it attainable. So if I have a hundred people, two months, 60 days, take out weekends, please it's about 50 days. 50 days divided by a hundred people is two personal phone calls a day. If you can't do two personal phone calls a day, you need to get out of the business. 
Because let me tell you, you're already making more than that. Just ask for the business. But we create a cycle. So if I call Jim today, as soon as I hang up the phone, I'm scheduling my next reminder to call Jim in two months. But I'm keeping it simple. Because if I call Erica tomorrow, I'm calling Erica two months from tomorrow. It's a simple flow. But what happens is, is we all try to jam it all in. We get like, oh my God, I got to do it all. I want to do it all. But now what happens is, is guess what? You're going to get referrals and leads. And guess what's going to happen? They're going to fall in the pipeline. So today, instead of having two calls, I got four calls. It's going to start to grow, but you're going to start to become more comfortable. It's going to become more smooth. It's going to become quicker. It's going to become easier because you get comfortable with it. It's going to come a point where you can handle 200. We start with 100 because it's manageable. If you can have 200 eight clients, hell yeah, we'll find a way to work that. But it becomes smoother and easier as you go along with it because you become comfortable with it. It becomes organic. Pick up the phone and call someone. Second thing we do, handwritten notes. The library I'm going to give you guys, there's a bunch of sample notes in there. Why should we write, what should we write notes for? What, you know, I want to write three to five notes a day. What do we write about? Follow up thanks phone call. My call. Can you hear me? Yep, I said thanks for taking my call. Thanks nice for taking my call. Absolutely. Anybody else? Thanks for referring me someone. Thanks for referring me someone. We're going to go into that in a second. I'm going to dive deep into the referral side. Anybody else? Closing anniversary date. Closing anniversary date. Great one. How many people do that? That's such a great call. When yeah. you call a past buyer, what do they do? Oh my God, Rob, you got to come see the hardwood floors. We had them refinished. Oh my God, you got to see the kitchen. You got to see the yacht. It's all set up for the summer. They're so excited to share these experiences with you. You went along for the ride. You should be in touch with them. If you're not in touch with them, there's a problem. That's your best source of business. Someone you did a good job for. Someone you worked your ass off for. Take advantage of that. That's a juicy lead. That's a hot lead. Because they want to send you people because of how good you are to them. Keep being good to them. How many times have you been sitting around a table and you're with friends and you hear your friends say, Oh, my doctor retired, my dentist retired, my hairdresser retired. And you always have people jump in. Oh, you got to call my doctor. He's the best. Oh, my doctor. She's awesome. I love her. But then there's always a few people who are reserved and don't say anything. Why? Two reasons. One, they don't have a doctor or whatever the trade is. Two, they don't like theirs. They're not a big fan of theirs. Here's the real reason we give referrals. So we look good. Would you ever refer to someone if they, you didn't have 100% certainty that, that person was good? No, you don't want your friend coming back to you and saying, hey, that hairdresser you sent to me? Yeah, she shaved my head because it was so bad. You don't want that on your soul. You don't want that on your gut, on your conscience. We gotta touch these people. We gotta build that relationship. We gotta be that person. We have to be in touch with them. We have to do a good job. And that's part of what we're going to talk about throughout the Buffini course is not only staying in contact, but what we do to stay in contact when we're working with buyers, when we're working with sellers. But notes to me are a lost art. To me, it's one of the best things you can do in this business. There is nothing better than a handwritten note. You go on a listing presentation. I've had agents that have taken this course. I can tell you, I have agents they go into a listing presentation. And as soon as they leave that, they already have the card in their car ready to go. And they go right to the mailbox. And they drop it right, not in the person's mailbox. They're going to mail it through the USPS, but they go right to the post office. Quick delivery. They make sure they get it right to the post office. I'm not waiting for the mail carrier to pick it up on his route, and it takes an extra two days. Go right to the, right to the heart of the source. So they get that the next day, typically. I get a note. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, it was so great to meet you, you know, this week. 
I know you're you know, meeting with other agents and why you're making a decision. If you have any questions, day or night, 24 seven, don't ever hesitate to pick up the phone and call me. I know this is a difficult situation. I am here for anything you may need. Look forward to hearing from you soon, Rob. Now I could say that to you at the listing presentation. I could be Leonardo DiCaprio and pull off an Academy Award winning performance. I'll shed a few tears about how excited I am for you to be my client. You know, I'm so excited. I'm going to stand on the rooftop that I might get this listing. Hell no, I'm not doing that. When I write that handwritten note though, it means more. That handwritten note means more than your words because you put it in writing. New buyers. So excited to work with you, Frank. Listen, if there's anything you need throughout this whole process, day or night, 24-7, don't ever hesitate to pick up the phone and reach out to me. I'm here to make this as smooth as possible for you. You made that person's day. Made that day. But what are they doing now? They're going to talk about you. What's the biggest problem with agents today? Communicating. At the end of the day, a lot of them suck. They disappear. How many times do you have to call a listing agent to get into a property? You call them for three days. I want to sell your listing and you don't want to call me back? I don't want that person selling my house. I'm a buyer. Biggest reason a buyer leaves their agent? I don't hear from my agent enough. Biggest problem. When we go out and do the stuff, and they hear from us enough, and we do things like these note cards, they're telling everybody about us. It's a mistake if you don't use Erica. It's a mistake because of how you treat your customer, because of how you handle the whole transaction, because of how you communicate. Handwritten notes, so important in that. So there's a lot of reasons we write notes and we'll get into that throughout the course. And I'm gonna show you guys, we got some sample notes on our website that you can take a look at. But the biggest reason that I still write handwritten notes, referrals. So we're gonna ask another question. We get referrals all the time. Hopefully we should be, but we've all gotten a referral at some point. So if I were to call you today and said, hey, my brother needs to buy a house. Can you help them out? What would you do for that referral person? Me, the guy sending you the lead. What would you do for the guy sending you a referral on a transaction? Donna, we'll go to you first. Um, well, if someone sent me a transaction, I would thank them with a note and then I would send a gift. After it closed? Yes. Okay. Frank. I sent a $5. I can tell this card with a note when I get the referral. Don't laugh. You're feeling my thunder, man. Oh, sorry. Good. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That's awesome. Kevin. Uh, it depends on the person. On deals that I've done before, it's um, like family-wise, I'll take them out to eat. You know, something simple. When like you that. get the lead? Uh, but, like if I got the lead and it's like in the process or we're looking and I know something, that, you know, it's going to turn into something. Okay. Then at that point, I'm communicating whether it's – Hey, you want to go grab a drink? You want to do this? You want to do that? And then, hey, if they send me things, obviously that's a good person to keep in touch with. Okay. I guess. I think the same thing with the stay thing. I have no new things to say, you know, thanking them and, you know. Do you do it? Them. You got a couple of referrals. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Actually, I am going for someone is a lot more than that. Even before the uh, house is coming, I'm preparing uh, a lot of stuff. I'm taking care of the house to prepare Okay. okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to do the same. I sent a thank you card. Like when you get the lead? Yeah. Okay. Like a coffee. Perfect. Or something. So that's what we want. One of the simple quotes, and I'm not a guy that walks around, you know, spitting out quotes, but a simple quote, reward behavior, not results. It's one of the biggest things. So I ask that question all the time to realtors, and you get a lot of different answers. Some people, you know, will do the Dunkin' Donuts card right when they get the lead. Some people wait till it closes. Well, here's the problem. Statistically, about 40% of referrals are actually gonna close. 
because the guy they send you may have a 400 credit score. He's not buying a hole in the wall, let alone a house. Some don't work out, some change their mind, some go other ways. But that person thought of you. They thought of you as the realtor and they knew someone that was buying. It's not their fault the buyer did bad credit score. So what we do is as soon as you get a lead, you instantly turn right around and you mail that person a thank you note for sending you the lead. Kevin, thanks so much for sending me Frank. I really appreciate it. Listen, don't forget, anybody else you know looking to buy or sell, I'd love to work with them as well. That message is in everything we do now, guys. Do me a favor. Go have a cup of coffee on me. Throw a 5 or $10 Dunkin' Donuts card. But I want to give you a specific example. So I had a, one of my friends, Andrew. He doesn't drink coffee. So he sent me a lead, and I don't compete. I give them out, but I still want people coming to me with referrals. So I can, you know, make a little referral money. But at the end of the day, Andrew doesn't drink coffee. So I typically did the Dunkin' Donuts cards and all that. But why am I going to send him a Dunkin' Donuts card when I know personal data is where it comes in? I know he doesn't do that. He doesn't drink coffee. Well, how would you know that? Well, maybe say, hey, Erica, let's meet for coffee and just catch up. You know, oh, no, like, you know, and you go and then just drink a lot. Oh, yeah, I don't drink coffee. Make a note of that. So you don't send them a Dunkin' Donuts or a Starbucks cup. So instead, I sent them a $10 Panera cup. Next time I saw him, it's one of my best friends. I talk to him pretty much every week. Hey, thanks, bought me lunch yesterday. No problem. Flash forward to the deal closing. Now the deal's closing. I see a couple gift cards in this business that I can't stand. Capital Grill and Legal Seafood. Can't stand them? Here's why. I'm going to tell you why. Why I can't stand them. First off, legal seafood. Unless you know that person loves fish, a lot of people don't eat fish. But they have steak on the menu. I'm going to tell you what happens. I went to legal seafood. I had someone that was giving me a legal seafood gift card for five years. <laughs> okay. We used it one time and we went to dinner. We sat at legal seafood. My wife hates fish. I love fish. But we sat there and was, oh my God, how do you eat this stuff? Oh my God, the smell. Oh my God. Why the heck do I want to go back? Right. And you're not going with one of your guy friends to legal seafood and having a nice dinner, you know? I'm going to the bar. I'm not going to lie. I'm going for, you know, nachos and chicken wings with the guys. So, guess what happened? I'd give it to my parents. And they'd give me something. They'd say, oh, well, we don't go to this restaurant. You guys do. You take this one. Well, guess what? Now when I go use the gift card, I think about my parents, not the guy who gave it to my papa, and vice versa. Capital Grill. You know what the first thing I think when someone gives me a Capital Grill gift card? Usually they're a hundred bucks. It's nice, it's thoughtful. But where's the other hundred bucks? <laughs> You're giving me a gift card. You're giving me a gift card that I gotta go spend another hundred dollars because I'm not gonna go to Capital Grill by myself. So I'm gonna go with my wife. And it's gonna cost me another hundred bucks. And that's if we don't drink. Really? Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Nice thought. Got it. But guess what? If I do use it, it's three or four or five months. By the time I go use it, I kind of forget who gave it to me. It's in the safe. We keep all the gift cards in there. We get stacks of gift cards, places they'll never go. We give them out sometimes. I'm just never going to use it, you know? But me, I like Texas Roadhouse. That's my style. You can't tell me what I like. I like to go to Texas Roadhouse. I like the food's good. I like the margaritas. I, I, it's my style. I don't, bread's awesome. The bread's the best. The salad, everything. I'm loud. You guys can hear me in here. On the weekends, do you think I want to go and get really dressed up and be quiet in a restaurant? Hell no. That's not my style. Give them what they like. Give them what they like. Capital Grill is nice. It's thoughtful. But if they're not going to use it, why give it to them? How excited are you that you got a deal? How excited are you that you got a referral that you made, let's say, five grand on? 
I hope you're excited because if you're not, get out of the business. This won't be fun for you. If you don't enjoy that part, I don't know what you're gonna like. Getting fired, I don't know. But if I if someone gave me Texas Roadhouse, what am I doing? I'm using that probably in the next couple of weeks. And the best part is I don't have to pay. Sweet. Give them stuff they like. So when the deal closed, I said, my friend Andrew, make these notes personal. Make them you. Like I said, just like you make the quotes you, make these you. So I sent them the gift card. Hey, Andrew, thanks so much for sending me Sophie. I really appreciate it. Listen, anybody you know looking to buy or sell, I'd love to, you know, work with them as well. Do me a favor. Go have dinner and drinks on me one night. P.S. Don't get mad. If you want, I'll come drink $50 worth of tequila with you. Make it you. If you have that type of relationship with that person, make that your relationship. You know what the worst thing you can be is? Fake. There's a reason that your friends and family like you. Because you're you. Don't go out and be someone different. I hate that. They don't want to deal with that guy. I want to deal with Rob who cares. I don't want to deal with the corporate Rob. It's like a big myth. Be you. No cards work. Get in the habit of setting these every single day. Third thing. A market drive for changing color. Third thing. Here's where the Boston accent gets really heavy. So I'm going to spell it out on the board. Pop buys. Pop buys. Not pop by the sailor, man. That's what it comes out and sounds like. Pop buys. Stopping by somebody's house two or three times a year with a small gift. And we throw little tags on them. And again, the tags will be on the platform that I show you guys at the end where you can download some of this free stuff. But the Popeyes, the best type of marketing, face-to-face, eye-to-eye. Looking someone in the eye and asking for the business is going to produce the best results. So, Let's have a little fun here. So let's take a look at this. Oh, let's get some. Just relax and my oh, wait, this is all right. We're having trouble with audio here. Yeah, guys, the coffee and donuts. I'm sorry. I was sitting in my house a couple weeks ago, just relaxing. My doorbell rang. This is weird. It's a different feeling when your doorbell rings today, opposed to 20 years ago. 20 years ago, your doorbell rang. That was a happy moment in your house. It was called company. <laughs> we you sit guys there on Thursday night watching TV. Your doorbell rang. The whole family shot off the couch. Oh my God! <laughs> Put the lights out. Somebody's here. We got people. <laughs> the whole family went to the door. The kids were in socks. They slid up in the door. <laughs> Nobody looked to see who it was. Right, you just opened up the door and you're like, oh my God, look at that. <laughs> look at us. And you ask, what the hell are you doing here? 
person be like, I was in the neighborhood. <laughs> I thought I might stop by and see how the kids are doing. <laughs> Like, oh, come on in. <laughs> We're gonna have some cake. <laughs> Your mother had a little entrance with some Sara Lee cold cake, just in case company came over. <laughs> she made an announcement when she bought it. She <laughs> this is company only. Don't smoke that muffin. This is for you people. <laughs> To God, somebody comes over so we can cut the cake. <laughs> she put her cake in the middle of the table, proud of it. And she put it right in the middle. Just up and slice. My cup of coffee. I'm going to cook my some sack. <laughs> yeah, it's old school. <laughs> A lot of the young kids are looking at me like, what is that, an iPhone app? <laughs> Mother had a tin, a brown and orange tin of Sanka, ready to go just in case the company should put a big pot on the table. Go ahead. You get a cell phone back then. If your, son, if, your, if, your, if your house phone did ring, your father stood up and said, nobody get that phone. <laughs> We got company. <laughs> <laughs> we lost strength in time. Two hours went by. We were like, we got to get out of here. That's okay. Next time we're going to come by you. But yeah, my door's always open. <laughs> now your doorbell rings. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> So let's just get back. Do you still with us? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, perfect. So I love showing that video here because it's so true. When someone rings your doorbell now, don't we all just duck and hide? We really do now. So how do we avoid that? Because I tell everybody, when my doorbell rings, there's two people I answer the door for. The guy from the Chinese food place and the guy from Giovanni's. That's it. Because any friend or family who comes to my house comes in my back door, they don't knock, they don't ring a bell, they just come in. So when someone rings the bell, Grubhub doesn't come to the door, they call you and you gotta walk out to the car. So two people, Giovanni's and Dragon Island. I can honestly tell you, I've had people ring my doorbell. I won't game names because we are recording today. <laughs> and I pretend I'm not home. You sit and look at the dog, you're like, shh, <laughs> pretend we're not here. And you're like, you're peeking through the window and then you just stand totally still until you see their lights driving down the street and you're like, all right, we're good. Go back to normal. Come on, we've all done it, admit it. Come on, we've all been there, we've all done it, you know? So what do we do? We gotta avoid that. How do we avoid that? Well, a couple things, and we're gonna really dive into this in the eight week course, obviously, but call ahead. Hey Frank, it's Rob, listen. I'm right around the corner. I'm heading to an appointment, but I've had something in my car for a few days. Do you mind if I swing by real quick and drop it off? Sure. I'm telling you, I got to leave. I'm telling you, I got to go to an appointment, yeah. but I just want to get this freaking thing out of my car. I'm, I'm, I'm on my way out as well. Yeah, perfect. All right, I'll, I'll just swing by real quick and drop it off. Like I said, I got to run. Always stay, you're leaving. Never stay, because if you stay, they're going to think that's going to happen every time. We pull up in front of the house. When I get out of my car, leave the car running. We're not going to go in and leave the car running and everything. 
take the gift out of the passenger side door. It's usually facing the sidewalk, right? Leave that door open. It's all small little hints that I am leaving. When they say, Frank, why don't you come in for a cup of coffee? Rob, why don't you come in for a cup of coffee? Grab a beer. Let's grab a beer. Let's catch up. I can't. i got to run to an appointment. But listen, let's grab a beer next week. What day is good for you? Let's go. Let's grab a beer at, you know, Fridays or something and just catch up. You know, that's now an opportunity where they're choosing to be there. Versus feeling obligated to invite you into their house. That's one of the things we call an unexpected extra. That's another thing outside of what we're going to go through with our top four. That's another way of communicating with them. Unexpected, actually. Now we can go and sit at Fridays, catch a beer, catch up, shoot the shit conversation, and talk about real estate. And I can sit there. Now, sitting in a setting like that, isn't it more comfortable to like really get into like why you need referrals? Versus on the phone and saying, hey, listen, don't forget, if you know someone looking to buy a cell, I'd love to work with them. If I'm sitting at Fridays and be like, Kevin, you know what? Yeah, I really, you know, I just, my business is all around referrals. So seriously, like, if you ever know anyone that's thinking about buying, someone mentions it, like, give my name and, you know, I'll take care of you, whatever. You know, you have that conversation, but now that's an opportunity where you have that opportunity. That's the difference. So back to the Popeyes. What do we bring? Don't spend a ton of money. This doesn't need to be this big gift. Just because we show up with a $20 gift versus a dollar gift, it makes no difference. It's a thought and effort. You can do some really cool stuff for one to four dollars. You should um, soup recipes with packets of ranch shell ranch dressing. Love it. Like it was super cute and love it. Quick little. People love it. A couple other ideas. Here's one of my favorites. I'll give you my favorite one first. So one of the big things is putting a tag on it to market yourself. So they call them Popeye tags. You can buy stickers. You can buy a tag. Whatever you want to do, you buy them at Staples. You get all different kinds of stuff. But you want to put a little tag on it. You put a little corny saying. So do you have a saying on it? You got to have that corny little saying. So here's a couple. One of my favorite ones. We all have these around the house. I got like five of these. Those orange handled six in one screwdrivers. Yep. I got those everywhere. I got them in like every kitchen drawer. Every room in the house is one of those. I never can't not find one. We went to the doll store with one of our classes. They bought these and we came up with a tag for it. Don't get screwed by another realtor. Call Rob Bryant Real Estate Needs. <laughs> People loved it. <laughs> They loved it. They thought it was the funniest thing. Guess what? They went out and told people about it. And they got referrals because of these people talking about the corny little line on their screwdriver. Ketchup, mustard, and relish time three packs. How many people have barbecues in the summer at some point or another? You're always having people over there in the summer. And what do we do in the summer? It's just like the instant reaction, just grow. You know, during the winter, we're doing all different things. I'm gonna make a roast beef, I'm gonna make a turkey for dinner, make a gravy. Summer, it's, we're going to barbecue. Every single time. No one makes a roast beef in the summer. No one cooks a turkey in the summer. We grill. And if I'm going to make that stuff, I throw it on the freaking grill. And I'm still going to throw some hot dogs and hamburgers on with it. Because that's what you do. Ketchup, mustard, and relish, find three packs. You put the stickers on the bottles. Let's catch up and let me help you relish in your investment. Call Rob for all your real estate needs. Guess what? Now when you have your barbecue, Someone picks up the ketchup and squirt it on their hamburger. Every time, there's your sticker. Rob? Yeah? You went to the right, and I couldn't hear you. Okay, so the ketchup must in a relish Heinz three-packs. Did you hear that one? I didn't catch the tagline. Let's catch up, and let me help you relish in your investment. Call Rob for all your real estate needs. Thank you. Welcome. So... We get out there with these gifts. We bring them back. Little chocolates for St. Patrick's Day is coming up. Little bag of gold chap chocolate coins. Here's your down payment. You know, something like that. Getting out there and dropping by is one of the most important things because face to face, eye to eye is so important. I had gum, extra gum. 
I go, I, I go the extra mile. Give me a call if you need it. Love it. What is that? 25 cents? Yeah. Come 25 cents a pack. 50 cents. You can give them two packs. <laughs> That's a great idea. It's things like that, guys. Change it up. But you know what? Then maybe around the holiday time, maybe you're, you know, if if Rob sends me 10 leads this year or seven leads, well, you know what? Maybe at Christmas time when I'm doing these pot buys, Rob gets an extra bottle of wine. Here's one of my favorite ones. Thanksgiving. What did everybody do with Thanksgiving? Pies. Everybody loves pie. Some kind of pie. So we did this a few years ago, and we did it as a reverse pot buy, which I'll tell you about in a second. But, you know, Market Basket, BJ's, Costco, you can get apple pies, pumpkin pies for like three or four bucks a piece. So if you have a hundred bucks, a hundred people, you're talking three hundred dollars for a hundred pies. That's not that bad. And you put a little sticker on them. Yeah, something we used to do um, in the winter time, we get like a little bucket of salt, mm -hmm. put our put our name on it. Love it. We go, we wouldn't even tell them, just drop it off. Put yep. it there, boom, they're good. Everybody loves salt. Like springtime, like little need. um little spring cleaning packets. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It's little things like they're gonna use them. Yeah. It's thoughtful. And then we wait to like, we, like we have it in hand and we wait if there was a, like a snowstorm comes. If it's like announced, oh, you know, we're getting like two feet of snow on this day. We go the week before and start dropping everything. Great idea. So then they're screwed and they're gonna have to use it. Right. Awesome idea. And that's, and that's the stuff. You have fun with it. You know, we have fun with these in the class. Have fun with it with your groups. So these Popeyes are so key. I mentioned a reverse pot buy. So this is another cool little thing to do, maybe once a year. So you send out the pies are a really good one because they have a reason. So you prep it, it's preparation. So what do I do? How do I prep? Well, we start marketing maybe a month in advance. Hey, I'm doing a pie giveaway. Here's a list of pies you can choose from, pick it, you get a free pie from me. Cool. And then you do it as a reverse Popeye. You know, you have this room here. You have your offices. Post it at the office. Have a reverse Popeye. Hey, pie pickup. Wednesday and Thursday from three to five both days. Or three to seven because they're commuting or something. And you set the room up nice. You have a little, champ you know, a little champagne, little, you know, shrimp cocktail, a little veggie tray. Cheap money. But you have it set up and it's this opportunity just to come in and Shoot the shit for five minutes. Happy holidays. Hope you guys have a great holiday. But now they come to the office. They see, they see this presentation. They say, wow, she does so much for her customers. It's relationships. The more we're in front of these people, the more business we're going to get. Next, our fourth and final way of communicating with people is a newsletter. Let's talk about these for a second. I'm gonna tell you what I hate first about newsletters. And I'm gonna tell you how to do this. What I hate about newsletters is, let me get a little background here. You hear this word all the time in this business. And I hate this word, old school. How many people hear the word old school in this business? All the time. It's not old school. It's how you do business. The stuff people call old school is stuff you should still be doing mostly. Maybe it's a couple things, but 99% of it is stuff you should still be doing. Here's the problem. 2007 in our industry was flipped upside down. Yeah, there was a recession, but here's the biggest thing. We started to be seeing technology become a major factor in our business. I love technology. If you know me, you know I love technology. But here's why I hate it. it makes people lazy. They make excuses. They want the technology to do everything for them. Technology wasn't put there.
to automate everything. It was put there to make your life easier, to do more. Our business changed. Prior to the recession, real estate was hyper-local. Coming out of the recession, what that did is that made agents go everywhere. We became more respectful of making a dollar in this business. So we said, I'll go from Revere to Worcester if it means I'm going to get a paycheck. Whereas before, the only place the Revere agent maybe went was ever. Other than that, you didn't go. If you sold in Salem, New Hampshire, you sold Salem, New Hampshire. When someone wanted to buy in the next town over, you were first. You didn't do that deal. Blew my mind. There's still some old school people. There are still some old school people that do that. And that's, you know, and hey, if they got this fear and they're happy, fine. But at the end of the day, realistically, to be successful in this business, we have to reach out and spread our territory. Well, what does that do? It's time. Does anybody know what the average commute in Massachusetts was in 2000? 30 minutes, round trip. Round trip. Round trip. <laughs> 30 minutes. Think about it. How many people live right near their work? Today, does anybody know what the time is? Two hours. Round trip. Two hours and 30 minutes. Okay. An hour and 15 minute average trip each way. Crazy. Here's the deal. We're driving more now. We're in the car more. So what does technology do for me? Technology lets me make phone calls in my car. Technology lets me have an app for my CRM. You know what they gave me when I started in this business? I had a pager. I had a black book that had your calendar, that had your contacts, that had your notes, all in this black binder. If I needed a phone number, cell phones were just coming out, like just starting to become something everybody had to have. You had a book. Now I can open up my phone and do anything in seconds. One of my favorite things, my map book. <laughs> now I have ways. I can remember being on 93 in downtown Boston and sitting in traffic and pulling out that map book and looking at the grid. You know, I'm here, here's the grid, A7. You know, when you're reading the grid, and you're like, okay, if I get off here, I can cut down this street here, come up this way, take a left here. It was great. Now what do we do? Ways or Google Maps. We let technology make us lazy. I still have that map in my glove Oh, I love them. Mine was so big it wouldn't fit in the glove compartment. So when we talk about newsletters, one of the reasons I bring up this technology dilemma is because Everybody just does the email newsletter. How many of those do you guys get every single day? Every day you're getting garbage. It's a graphic image. And when you get an email that's a graphic image, what's the first thing you do? Unsubscribe, delete. Nobody sees it. I love when I talk to an agent and they're like, I don't know why I'm not doing business. I send out a thousand newsletters a month. Where? Business builder. Well, if that's what you're relying on, no wonder. It's like a 12% open rate. And just because they open it doesn't mean they read it. They click, I bet you 10% of that 12% by mistake. Or oh, they clicked it to click unsubscribe. There you go. So what we want to do is for my top 100. Now those digital newsletters, I'm not going to say it's all bad. Because I keep saying technology was there to make us more successful. It was there to make our lives easier. My top 100, they're going to get a physical newsletter every single month. Mail. 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 To their house. Old school. Old school newsletter. Print it. And now here's the key when I mail that to the house. Hand write the envelope. Whenever I am coaching, training, doing whatever. I tell everybody, if you use labels, I stop my coaching and training for you because you're wasting your time and you're wasting mine. Because think about it in your own instance. You get an envelope at your house and it's got that little white Avery 5160 label that we all use. Where's it go? Trash. I do it every time. Do you know how many things I've thrown away that I actually should have opened? Bills. I went to a doctor's office one time. 
and it was a sleep apnea doctor. So I'm only there once a year and I go in and they're like, you owe like 300 something. I was like, what? Get all these late fees and I, I didn't even get a bill from you. I paid my copay when I came. They were sending me things, but it was just plain white envelopes. Right in the trash. Throw away a check. I've done that, I'm sure. They called me like, oh, you never cashed that. They printed the label. Like, right I had no idea. You wouldn't. You'd throw it away. But when you get something that's handwritten, how often do you open that? Okay. Every time. Even if you know what it is and you know it's junk mail, you still open it, don't you? Yeah. Every time, pretty much. That, that's why that home buyers are keep sending me the why you're not allowed to you want to sell your house. Right. <laughs> but you open it. But they did not say on the top, not yeah. just my name. Right. <laughs> right. So that's the thing. Handwrite the envelopes. So we give you the content right through Business Builder. You can print this out every single month for free and just mail it. But you handwrite the envelopes. Now, the digital newsletters, we can do people, B, C clients, people who aren't our A clients. Yeah, because I'm not going to sit there and write out 1,000. So you know what? I mail 100, and I'll send the other 900 people an email newsletter. And you know what? If they respond and become active, they can graduate to my A program and get my top-notch service. So now, let's kind of recap here. We have phone calls. So we want to talk to them. We broke this down already. Six calls a year, every two months. Breaks down to two phone calls a day. Note cards. I want to try to write three to five note cards a day on average. Popeyes. I want to hit these people two to three times a year. So you could do that. Uh, you know, you could do the Popeyes either way. So Popeyes are one of those things that you can kind of, you know, rearrange your structure. I recommend breaking them up. Hang on one second, Frank. I recommend breaking them up, you know, doing, setting a goal of doing maybe three or four a week, you know, and then keep the change going. You know, now you're having like a new gift every month, but now you're not going out and spending three or 500 bucks. You're spending 75 bucks. You just keep a bunch of them in your car, but you plan it. So if I know, you know what, one of my clients is out in Chelmsford and I'm not over there all the time, but all of a sudden one of, I have a deal, you know, I have a show and it's taking me to Chelmsford. Ooh, you know who lives in Chelmsford? This person, let me stop by their house while I'm over in the area and check it out. But then set a reminder to make sure we hit them again in four months. So newsletters, we do once a month. Big key to newsletters. Here's what happens. One of the worst things, you wanna know what the realtors, one of the biggest problems with realtors is when it comes to anything in this business, doing you know marketing or growing your business? Bingo, consistency. We do it for a couple months and then we stop because we don't get results. This is not a get rich quick business. You can get rich in this business and you can do it quickly, but it's also gonna depend on your consistency and it's gonna take time. But here's the thing, if I do it consistently, even when I'm producing, I'm never wondering where my next deal is coming from because the deal you get today, the call you get today for a referral isn't closing for six months, but the referrals you've gotten for the last six months are starting to pop up now. It takes time to get to that first closing. But if you do this stuff consistently, then they should all just keep happening. But it's gotta be consistent. I see it all the time with social media. People create business pages, Facebook page, right? And then what do they do the first couple of weeks? They load it up with content. Every day they're posting, they're so excited to do a video. They're posting all images. They're posting, you know, great articles. And then what happens? Dead. Radio silence. Why? No consistency. They got distracted and they went to the next bright, shiny light. I have agents call me all the time in this business. Rob, what do you think about this idea? Hey, I got this great idea. What do you think about this? Before I even tell them it's a great idea or it's a horrible idea, do you know what I do? What do you do for referrals? Do you work your sphere of, how do you work your sphere of influence? If they don't work their sphere of influence, I say, why are you trying to find the next great thing when you're not even working on the best thing? Why recreate the wheel when you're not even doing 
what you should be doing. Now that other stuff is great. Now I'm not saying referral should be your only source of business. You should find other methods, you know, leads. Create more business. Foreclosures and expires and, you know, for sale by owners. Investors, cold calling, door knocking, neighborhood. There's other ways to generate business and you don't stop that stuff. But if this isn't your number one priority, then you need to redirect your focus. So when it comes to the newsletters, one of the big recommendations I have for you, because here's what happens. We, we create things and we don't stick to it because of time. So with the newsletters, write out five envelopes a day while you're doing your calls and everything else. Because now, when the end of the month comes around, I'm not sitting there writing out 100 envelopes, putting stamps on them, printing the letter, stuffing it. Because what's going to happen? You're going to make excuses. This came up, that came up, there's a showing, something with the kids, I got this going on, I got a birthday party. Uh, and now what happens? Well, now your newsletter is two weeks late. Consistency is important. People will notice that. When they get it every single month on the same day they get their mortgage bill, consistent. What it is, it's not for them to read the articles. It's for them to open that envelope and see your name, your face, and your brand. But the other factor is that consistency piece because they see how you work. That's who I want to refer to because of how you work your business. You're consistent. So we write these out five a day instead of doing 20 because now we don't overload ourselves. So two phone calls, three to five note cards, a few Popeyes a week, and five envelopes a day. What are we talking, 30 minutes max? 30 minutes and watch what happens to your referral business. If you just do that stuff. Now, we're gonna end on this topic. That's CRM. CRM is one of the most important things you need in your business. I had um, the president of Century 21, Mike Needle, last year at one of our conferences. Someone asked him, what's your favorite CRM? Or he said, what's, I'm sorry, let me redirect that question. What's the best CRM? You know what the best CRM is? The one you use. The one you're comfortable with. Now we give you several options here. We give you Zap, which I love, and we give you Business Builder. You have two CRMs in-house for free that are great. Get in, play around with them. But the CRM is what keeps you honest. It's setting reminders. It's following up. It's making sure you're doing the steps. It's taking those notes. It's tracking this biography right here about this person. <clears throat> it has the fields down here for the birthday and the purchase anniversary date. That's a great call. Can you imagine calling one of your buyers and saying, hey, Frank, can you believe you've been there a year now? We closed. Remember where we were a year ago today, sitting at the registry, getting that deal done? Great call. What are they going to do? They're going to recap the year. And guess what happens when I call after three or four years to keep doing it? You know what, Frank? I think this is the time to sell. My wife's pregnant and, you know, we got a kid on the way and you know what? We need more room. Or they're a little older. I think it's time to downsize. The kids moved out. We don't need all this space. Or we just want to move. Every five to seven years, someone sells their home. a lot of business that you'll probably leave it untapped. But what happens is, is when we don't have any organization to our sphere of influence, we're just throwing darts with our blindfolds on. Well, throw out a Patriots magnet. Dart. I always say to agents, you're better off just taking those Patriots magnets and dropping them on the ground and stop and chop and let people pick them up. You'll probably get more business from that. 
People want personal relationship, guys. That's where business comes from in this industry. It's personal relationship. So with that being said, let's talk a little bit about why we're here. <clears throat> so what we are doing is we're going, um, we're launching our new pathway to mastery. Are you broadcasting? Yes. Um, I'm recording it. I'll send it to her afterwards. Okay. So, well, she distracted me. Um, I lost my train of thought there for a second, but I'm back. So, we are starting our first Pathway to Mastery program. So Brian Buffini has two programs. We have um, Peak Producers, which I've been teaching for the last seven or eight years. And we are launching, I just got certified in Pathway to Mastery. Pathway to Mastery is going to be an eight week program focused on helping you build your business working by referral. We're gonna cover a lot of other things besides just this here. An hour and a half with me is not enough to make you a pro at working by referral. And I'm not gonna promise you the eight weeks is gonna make you a pro, but you are gonna have a huge base to go off of. And what we're going to start as well is anybody who completes a Buffini course is once a month, we are going to have a Buffini group session to keep you guys updated afterwards and keep you on track. Because I wanna make sure that we don't drop the ball on this because what I see a lot of times with trainings is you're gonna go through this training and you're gonna kick ass. And you're gonna do really well. But when you don't have that consistent week over week, just big brother watching, you lose focus. So it starts to fade off. I see that all the time when we run training programs. I watch the numbers and they skyrocket and then they kind of level off. Again. And then you do another training and they go way up and then they skyrocket. So we want to make sure we keep you consistent with it as well. So we will be here every single week for eight weeks on a Wednesday morning, 10 to 11, uh, I'm sorry, 10 to 12. These classes run roughly two hours. I always ask you to keep two and a half hours open, cases, questions, because we always go through some extra stuff at the end. I don't want you to miss out, so I ask you to keep 10 to 12.30 open on Wednesdays for eight weeks. But still you're going to tape it too, right? This, no, this is a paid course. So that, this course here is gonna, you're gonna register for, it's $399. One time to Buffini, not to me. This goes right to Brian Buffini, you get a kit. So you're gonna get access to an online library of all different kinds of material. You're gonna get your box with your first three months newsletters. You're gonna get stickers, you're gonna get CDs, you're gonna get all kinds of cool stuff that's gonna help you complete this program. So with that being said, you guys will now have the opportunity to register. The link will be going out today with a copy of this video. So today's session was all recorded, it'll be posted online shortly and sent out with this link. So anybody who's interested in taking this Buffini class, I highly recommend it. I think it'll really change the way you do business. It gives you more structure. Now, I've used Buffini for my recruiting. It's made a world of difference over the last 10 years for recruiting for me because of how I work it. It's all about the relationship. So we're going to go through a lot of different things week over week. You know, and I just pulled up here just to kind of, you know, show you guys. You know, but the law of harvest you know, the stacking effect, you know, really going through working with today's buyers, you know, sellers. And that's the big thing is, is how you work these deals as well. So not only are we going to go through the basics of doing this stuff, but when we talk about working by referral, it's also how you run the whole transaction. One of my favorite lines, under promise over deliver every single time. The agents who get the most business. The ones who show up when it's FHA and you got to scrape off some paint off the deck, I'll come over and help you. You paint a room with them, everyone, you know, you help a client with that. You help them with getting movers in. You help them with getting vendors. You help them getting the house cleaner. You help. You're there the whole time. Buyers. What's the biggest problem in today's industry with buyers? Inventory, right? No inventory out there. So what happens? Some agents go two to three weeks without talking to their buyer. So what's the buyer thing? My agent doesn't love me. They don't care about me. They're too busy making money with other people. They think they're missing out on listings. 
They're not. There's no inventory. There's nothing in your in your criteria that's popping up. Should be touching base with them once a week. Hey, Frank, nothing new to report this week. Just want to give you a buzz. I'm watching. There was three homes listed this week, but none of them were in your price range. They're all two bedrooms, and you need to break. Friday text, whatever. It's that communication. So we're going to go through a lot of different things. We're going to do business planning. We're going to talk about negotiations, how you negotiate. We're going to talk a lot of different traits. And then we're going to tie in a lot of what we do here as well. That's the cool thing about me teaching this program and not some guy from Buffini. Because we're also going to tie in all the great things that you guys have here that work with this system. So with that being said, does anyone have any questions? Okay. So how many people are signing up? You guys in? Okay. So we're going to get that email out today. Donnie, you'll have that email today as well. Um, but the last thing I'll just pull up here, guys, is if you go to C21NE training, and if you click on marketing downloads, Right under here, once you sign in. Yeah. If you scroll down to the bottom, right here, working by referral met materials, these are all the great things we talked about. There's all kinds of different features and connection lists and letters and all that right in the system here. This is our training site. So with that being said, guys, that concludes today's session. We're gonna mail this out. We're gonna email this out. Probably gonna push the class back about a week. I may do one more hype session next week just to get some more people in here and maybe promote it a little bit more, but we're gonna get it out there. And so we'll probably push it back a week, but we're starting, planning on starting in three weeks then. Okay? Reach out with any questions and have a great day, guys. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Thank you, Rob. I appreciate it. The only thing that I couldn't under, 